All right, fam, how undercover CIA informants got killed. Badly designed CIA web uh, websites of wait what? websites got people killed. How did they? How did they get? How did they die by websites, guys? ATM card skimmers are evolving, and North Korean hackers aren't giving up. That's all coming up in today's roundup of cybersecurity tech news. Oh, I thought this was going to be like a video essay, guys. This is a covert CIA website. It's disguised to look like some random Iranian sports blog. When translated, you can see it has some commentary on Iranian football, some links. Guys, this looks so terribly designed, bro. If you guys, like, nobody would use this, right, guys? <laughs> they don't get much traffic on this website, I think. Links and even some ads at the bottom, but it's all a decoy. This is actually one of the many covert websites that the CIA was using for years to communicate with undercover informants living in countries like Iran and China. Snap. They actually just talk with informants, guys. Why are they living in other countries? See this text box here, disguised to look like some search box? Start typing and you'll quickly realize something is off. It's actually a password prompt. Get the password correct and a Java applet will launch. Dated, yes, but this website is from 2011, so I suppose we can cut the CIA some slack. Same goes for their ancient web design. A okay, okay, yeah, definitely ancient, guys. I think they would have upgraded it in 2023 by now, right? Especially with this guy making a video about it. Correct password will return this text box, where an informant can communicate with their CIA handler. Now, when you start... Handler? What the... Hearing about... Interesting choice of words. Out the top secret ways CIA agents communicate with their confidential informants on YouTube, there has to be a pretty bad reason for it. In this case, that reason is that the CIA's web development practices were so awful that they resulted in whole networks of spies being discovered by Iran. Oh, that's why they got, they, they got, they got found out, bro. And China. Monitoring us. They must be monitoring us quite often then. The fact it's on the homepage also makes it stand out more, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. What made the- Guys, I wouldn't know, but this is a cybersecurity channel, so there's obviously- It's a different crowd. They, they would know more often, right guys? This is such a disaster is that until 2013, the CIA was operating hundreds of these websites, each with a different theme. One of them is a Bob Marley fan page, another is a nature photography site, and Bob Marley fan page, guys. This one is a fitness blog, but they all had one thing. Fitness dog, they said. <laughs> they actually advertised bodybuilding.net, like the the huge body building forum, which is like one of the biggest forums around. In common, a password prompt disguised as a search box and a hidden communication field. But it gets worse. Sequential blocks of IP addresses were used to host these sites, and many of them were hosted on the same servers. No doubt this made life- That's a lot of Ethernet cables, man. Why do they need so many right here? If easy for the CIA- Okay, probably a server, but- <laughs> Copy-pasting code and hosting the site centrally. But the same can't be said for those informants. If an adversary found out about just one of these websites, it would be easy for them to uncover the rest. And that's exactly what happened. Former US intelligence officials said that the Iranians cultivated a double agent who led them to this secret CIA communications. Dang, bro, we're getting taken out by Iranian the government, bro. System. From there, in about 2011, everything unraveled. The Iranians used Google to uncover the rest of the websites, apparently just Google dorking to find sites based on reused code. Snap, bro. They're just using public search engines to find our sites. After making a list of websites, finding the undercover informants that were using them was also easy. Each informant had a website made specifically for them, which no one else used, so I imagine- What the heck? One person per website as well? Identifying the informants was as easy as just logging DNS requests. Following which, ironic- Dang. What if they used a VPN? Would a VPN help them here, guys? ...executed some of the CIA informants and imprisoned others. And after tipping off China, their authorities rounded up and executed around 30 agents working for... 
Dang, bro. Oh, this is way back then, guys. More than 10 years ago. I thought it was recent. The US. If you try to visit the first website we looked at, Iranian go- Dang, all it's just for spying, guys. I don't think the USA really does that for spying, right, guys? Olds.com, you'll find it's been re-registered. I don't hear about uh, people being, being executed for spying in the USA. And now redirects to the Reuters article, which blew the lid on this a couple of days ago. But with the help of the Wayback Machine, the original site lives on. Next up. How does the Wayback Machine have so much data to host all these sites? What you're looking at here is the next generation of ATM card skimmers. Now these things are dangerous because whilst it's quite easy to check for the skimmers we're all familiar with by just giving the card reader a little tug and squeeze, that won't work with these new skimmers. They're called deep insert ATM skimmers for a reason because they're designed to go inside the card slot itself, making them borderline impossible to check for. Guys, uh, has anyone been like card skimmed before? I have lost like my debit card before. But I've never been like card skimmed or anything. This ultra thin design, which is only 0.68 millimeters thick, is made possible by an unbelievably thin LiPo battery and a flexible PCB. Two things which aren't all that high tech. Batteries as thin as 0.4 millimeters are easy to find, and these days most PCB manufacturers do offer flexible PCBs. And they're trying, they're always trying to get more high tech with it, bro. Why they got a scam like this, bro? Sad, sad. So this skimmer itself will copy your card's magnetic stripe information, but the miscreants do- it Looks like my EBT card, bro. <laughs> ...also need to capture your pin code, which they typically do by hiding a tiny camera somewhere on the ATM. In this case, miscreants have been hiding cameras in a fake panel which covers literally the entire side of the machine. I don't know how you're meant to check for these later skimmers with anything less than complete paranoia by trying to pull apart literally every part of the machine and- Bro. This is sad, bro. They're stealing card info. Even peering into the card slot. However, luckily, these new skimmers have only been found in New York City, so it doesn't look like they've become a standard, but are rather the innovation of one criminal gang. Bad news, though, if you do live in New York City. Card skimmers are only able to exist because cards still have magnetic stripes. These things contain- Dang, bro. Do they need to be implanted in the skin now or something? Contain all the details of your card, minus the PIN number. I recently saw a TikTok of someone doing that. This 1960s era technology only still exists because a small handful of countries haven't yet moved on to chip and PIN. In fact, like us, right, guys? The first time I ever used the magnetic stripe of my card was on holiday in America a couple of years back, when a cashier was confused by me trying to insert my card into the bottom of the machine when there just was no slot. Good news, though. Magnetic stripes are going away. In a MasterCard article titled Swiping Left on Magnetic Stripes, very punny, they explain that they are phasing out the technology. But it'll take a while, until 20... Yeah, bro. Pretty high tech to just like put your card over the thing, right? Technology's getting better. For the win, for the win. Let's go, let's go, guys. 33, apparently. No doubt other credit card. Wait, oh, that's 10 years, bro. Companies will have similar timelines. So until then, you do have to be vigilant. Though it's quite a while, bro. I'm gonna have to do something else than just wait for it, bro. It's gonna take a while. Exactly how you beat card skimmers that are hidden in the slot itself, I don't know. But the best thing to do is attack the skimmer at its weakest point, the pin code. Usually skimmers grab this with a camera, so just make sure to cover the keypad with your hand. But then again, some skimmers actually ditch cameras in favor of fake keypads, which complicates things. Yeah, I recently saw a TikTok, TikTok of somebody actually removing a fake keypad, guys. I don't think there's a foolproof way to check if a keypad is fake. $67 for one, though. Wow. I mean, you can't really pull on something that's flat. I'm out of ideas here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So it's quite a bit just for that. All right, guys. Next up, we have another installment in the never It's a it's, uh, UK pound as well. ...ending series of North Korean recruitment scams. In this latest episode, brought to you by Microsoft's security division, Zinc, which uh, I would not try to like, I would not try to like sign up for that. Which is better known by their other stage name, Lazarus Group, has been weaponizing open source software. This latest operation sees Lazarus hackers posing as recruiters on LinkedIn, going by names like. Bri 
Guys, I, I don't think this this is legit, man. He, he's got like five hundred plus connections, right, guys? Mine right which is an upgrade from the names Lazarus hackers have previously used, which have included James Willie and Billy Brown. There was legitimately a time when you could seemingly spot a North Korean hacker based on whether it looked like an eight-year-old had come up with a name. Hey, Billy Brown ain't that bad, but it's not the typical name nowadays, right guys? In this latest operation, the fake LinkedIn recruiters would message the employees of companies that Lazarus wants to hack, and after migrating the conversation over to WhatsApp, Lazarus would leverage the prospects of lucrative job offers to encourage the victim to download a trojanized version of some open source application, like Putty or Tight VNC. Microsoft haven't given us screenshots of conversations between Lazarus and their victims, so we don't know exactly how victims were convinced to download a modified version of open source software, which on the face of it does kind of sound like a dumb thing to do. But I can't imagine Lazarus Lazarus's yeah, persuasion needed to be all that elaborate, as by the time a trojanized version of Putty, for example, is sent to a victim, most of the social, putty, like silly putty guys. <laughs> social engineering will have already been done. The prospect of a lucrative job It looks like a black hat kind of program. Maybe not though. Will be looming over a Sorry guys, they're not the most tech savvy on this stuff. Victim's head. So Lazarus could just say, you need to download our pre-configured version of Putty as part of some skills test. After downloading and running the modified version of Putty, it wouldn't infect the victim by default, but rather only when they used it to connect to a certain IP address with specific credentials. Presumably they coded this in to prevent accidental infections. And a similar tactic was observed when the attackers used a malicious version of Tight VNC, which would only drop malware when it was used to connect to a certain host. Same bro, sir. They're only going for certain targets, it seems, or something, guys. In either case, the malware would simply configure a backdoor that the North Korean hackers could use to remotely access the victim's computer. Exactly what they would then do... That's nice looking laptop, guys. ...do isn't clear, but North Korea's Lazarus hackers are usually financially motivated, and specifically target... Hey, what, what hacker isn't financially motivated nowadays, right guys? Companies they want to hack for some reason. <laughs> Often that reason is stealing a company's crypto assets. Just earlier this year, Companies have a lot of crypto assets. They stole over $600 million in mostly Ethereum via one of these recruiting scams. So whilst you might scoff merely at the idea Dude, that's quite a lot. of someone falling for one of these recruiting scams, they do work. They have a lot of uh, Bitcoin or whatever, bro. That's all. $620 million gone just like that. And recently, the US Department of State doubled their reward on information which could lead to the arrest of North Korean hackers to $10 million. Bro, that's like, you're going to be rich, bro. You're actually going to be rich. The best pen testing teams trust PlexTrack, the cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform, helping them build better reports in half the time, aggregate findings from all their tools. Of course, gotta see like a cybersecurity ad on a cybersecurity channel, right, guys? And maximize their reusable report content, like write ups and narratives. With PlexTrack, you'll become more efficient and effective, delivering better results from every engagement whilst exponentially increasing ROI and time savings. Ready to elevate your reporting, improve collaboration across teams, and demonstrate real progress? Spend more time hacking and less time reporting with PlexTrack. Claim your free month of the PlexTrack platform exclusively for Satonic viewers using the link. Yeah, guys, let's check out the comments, guys. Last part's just an end screen. Um, these site look, sites look, look so strangely real. Yeah. They don't look uh, the highest quality, but they look real. Funny someone. It's funny to imagine someone doing these at the CIA to show it. To their boss, it was like it was a school project and think bad HTML. Get someone. The CI is just a gift that keeps on giving. Their level of incompetence is crazy. I'm, I wouldn't think of it like that. CI informant websites look straight at GTA facts. Lesson learned if you're the CIA, hire, hire some um, young guy who doesn't know what they're doing. The security gubby should come up with a drone card. As the sole purpose of testing their reader to alert the user there's a phony skimmer inside. You can damage, always damage the strip and you just use a chip or two cards. One with damage strip for ATMs and one normal. 
Alright guys, check out Satanic in the description, I'll see you guys next video. Peace out.